know that these are the stations that GMC has put for check our performance, how we can behave in an acute emergency. Yeah, correct. So, so have, uh, yeah, yeah, continue. So in, in the semen kind of stations, uh, basically it's different from the other station in that way that we have to uh, deal the patient in a different way. We have to examine and invest, uh, investigate and treat the patient first. And side by side, we are getting the, the data gathering from the patient. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to assess uh, the sign and symptoms of any acute emergency. Like we are starting from the airway. Yeah, and we are checking whether it is patent or not. By um, mm -hmm. just and we have to verbalize the step accordingly. If we are just performing, like if uh, my patient, whether if it is conscious or unconscious, like mm -hmm. if you are entering into the cubicle and we have seen that there is a semen around us, so we have to be alert. We have to see what is around the semen, whether he is wearing any kind of bracelet, any blood yeah. transfusion is going on. So mm -hmm. if there is any rash or if there, if any procedure has been done for him, yeah. if any bag, bag of urine, uh, urine bag has been attached to him. Yeah, correct. And we have to see if uh, the findings over there. So, and we have to introduce ourselves. And yeah. if you feel the patient, patient is not responding, then we have to tap him. Yeah, correct. So if patient is responding, then we... Uh, yeah, if patient is responding, then we will start talking to him. I will cover that question because in previous session, a lot of people were having confusion about this. So we will cover this as well. Uh, when you have to start uh, asking uh, questions and when you have to start performing A, B, C, D, E, we will cover this question. Thank you so much, Dr. Nazish. And that's exactly what we have to do in SimMan. Basically, Thank you. Uh, there are some myths about semen as well that uh, it is the, the atmosphere is uh, dark and it is scary. It's not like that. It will be a well lit room. There will be a semen. There will be all the equipment around him, including a monitor, including uh, whatever is needed in the station. Like if you are uh, dealing with asthma or anaphylaxis semen, there will be. Uh, different kinds of masks there will be cannulas there will be if you are dealing with hypoglycemia semen then there will be different kinds of uh, glucose or dextrose solution on the table so in semen uh, you are not only verbalizing the thing you need to do the thing you have to give the gesture that you are performing the procedure it's not just like you are doing this drama so you need to actually go to the trolley. You need to pick up the thing you are telling. And if, there, if that thing is not there, then examiner will guide you that um, doctor uh, assume. Okay. In the sim man, you have to continue. Like you need to talk to sim man or examiner. Whatever you are doing, you need to talk to the patient. If patient is conscious, then obviously you, will be, you are telling him that I'm going to put the uh, uh, oxygen, I'm going to put the mask on and I will give you oxygen. I'm going to pass this IV cannula and I will give you fluids via this. So you have to keep talking to the patient. You are involving the patient throughout the station. And in the same man, the uh, same man, the marking criteria is same, data gathering, interpersonal skill and management. So you are marked absolutely the same way in other stations. Just the difference is that first difference man is acute scenario same thing you have to do uh, data gathering and management side by side, or you have to uh, point out the problem. Like if problem is with breathing, you will give the management according to that. I will be covering uh, brief steps of that now. So actually the simmen, I call it talking mannequin because it is a kind of, it's just, it's just like a normal mannequin. You don't have to be scared about simmen. So what you are going to do is uh, in, in the academies, they are also showing you sim men. So they are sim men, you, they, like if you are asking them any question, they will answer. If you are uh, palpating them for any pulses, if you are checking them for heart sounds, you are checking anything on sim men, uh, there is a proper program and examiner will be making the changes whatever change they are making you can appreciate that 
Chimman can make the sounds of bees, spider. Uh, he can make some gasping sounds. He can talk to you. Whatever is the uh, motive of examiner, he will make the Chimman do that thing. Similarly, there are some uh, in Chimman. Second thing is monitor. So on monitor, you can see different kinds of things. So on the monitor, there is ECG, heart rate. SpO2, BP, and respiratory rate. So in order to do this station in a good way, you have to keep talking to the sim man. You need to do the procedures and everything side by side. And you have to keep looking at the monitor. And if you see any change on the monitor, you need to address that. You need to do appropriate management according to that. When you are doing examination, like if you are looking for breath sound, if you are looking for auscultate, uh, auscul uh, doing, you are doing auscultation and you are looking for heart sounds and you are looking for bowel sounds, they will be audible. You can you can hear murmur, you can hear taps, or you can hear uh, wheeze, anything. And pulses will be palpable. If you are uh, dealing with a, a scenario of acute limb ischemia in which pulses are absent, then in the sim man, you can easily appreciate that. So this is a monitor. Uh, you will be having uh, not exactly the same, but a monitor which is like this. Uh, basically, you are looking for heart rate. You are looking for SpO2. You are looking for blood pressure reading. You are looking for sometimes there is a uh, heart rate and pulse is here. Okay, this is ECG, and sometime on some uh, monitors you can even see temperature. But normally these four, three, four things are there on the monitor. Okay, so in the sim man, as I told you, it's an acute setting scenario, so you have to deal it in a in a in the same way. Just keep it in your mind that you are in emergency. You have to save the patient. And if you are not doing the right kind of things, then your sim man can die. You have to save the sim man. Sometimes the sim man, sim man can die in some situation if they are doing something wrong. So uh, the first step is what when you enter inside the cubicle, you need to do exactly the same. Suppose that you are inside the cubicle. Now you need to greet, introduce, and you need to follow the same uh, protocol as you are following when you are having a face-to-face -face consultation. You have to look at the monitor. These are the two things that you need to do. So patient and monitor is there. You are talking to patient. You will introduce yourself. You will tell him, uh, you will ask his name. Sometimes name is in the task, so you can directly use it, use the name and you can say, hello, Mr. John, how are you doing today? How can I help you? he will answer you and if he is answering you then your next question should be are you comfortable enough to talk mr john and if he is saying yes then you can start asking questions and gather some data if as a response of this how can i help you he is not answering anything it means that your sim man is not uh, responding so you will Instead of talking, you will straight away jump to A, B, C, D, E approach. You will start, you will check his airway, breathing, circulation, and you will do the necessary steps. If you have asked him, how can I help you? And he's told you, doctor, doctor, I can't read doctor. So after that, your next question, are you comfortable enough to talk? He told you, yes, doctor, I can manage. Then you can ask him, uh, Odipara. Or if it is he's telling you about pain, you can ask about Socrates. So if the answer is no, doctor, please do something. Then instead of talking, start your ABCDE. So and uh, in between the management, like you have, you are at B. You have given him oxygen. You have given him uh, nebulization. And after that, you have you keep asking him, how are you now, John? Keep involving him. And if he's saying that he's better now ask him are you comfortable enough to talk now john so at that time gather data whenever your sim man is stable in between the station start gathering your data okay so if sim man is conscious and talking it means that airway is patent look at the monitor if vitals are stable 
and if vitals are not stable you you have to follow different approach if vitals are vitals are unstable and then you will start doing a b c d e without wasting any further time because your goal is to save the life if vitals are not stable then you will get short history like do your odipara do your dds brief past medical history and that's it your history should not go beyond 2 and a half minute not more than that and start your management okay so we have different kinds of scenario uh, in sim men if patient is talking and patient is stable in that case we have these four things if patient is talking but on monitor vitals are not stable so we have these four things and if patient is unconscious and he's not responding then it can be either like a hypoglycemia or it can be a dnar so up till now these are the types of sim menstruation you are facing in exam we discussed about acute limb ischemia in our previous uh, sim men session today we are going to do anaphylaxis and hypoglycemia and for the rest of the topics Uh, hopefully we will be arranging another session soon okay so the next part is what is a b c d e in sim men it is a basic thing and you will be doing exactly the same thing in all the scenarios you will just tailor your response so mostly in sim men airway is patent so it means that patient airway is patent but you have to still verbalize you need to tell that my, my patient is talking it seems like his airway is patent if your patient is not talking then you will open the mouth to look for any foreign body or anything to make sure his airway is patent and you will verbalize that thing also so i am checking the airway of my patient it looks patent move to the next part breathing b is for breathing so whenever in in b c and d first thing is first part of b is looking at the monitor for your respiratory rate and for spo2 if there is a problem in these two parameters then obviously you have to do the management but if it is fine still you need to verbalize so i can see my patient's breathing rate is 20 say and my patient's oxygen saturation is 98 so move to the next step okay so if there is a problem like if oxygen saturation is low breathing rate is high then you will give 15 liters okay ask another question if you are not sure about it's not written in the task then you can ask the patient uh, are you having smoker cough or do you have copd and then you will give oxygen via non rebreathable mask so this is a picture of this non rebreathable mask you will pick the mask from trolley and you will this mask on the face of your patient <clears throat> after that next step is position of the trachea you will check that after that third step is examination of chest you are doing inspection palpation and i think uh, percussion is not very needed because it is an acute scenario so after palpation you can move to the auscultation so if you are doing auscultation you can find a wheeze here or you can find crept here and if you have found wheeze you will manage it you will manage the patient there if you have found crept like you will give him diuretics if you have found wheeze you will give him bronchodilator and one more thing is if b is not relevant to your case like you are dealing with a station of uh, hypotension like it's a station post hysterectomy one and breathing is not very relevant to you so sometime examiner will even tell you uh, it's fine doctor move to the next step sometime he is not telling you so don't waste your time because uh, just in and palpate superficially and after that auscultate and move to the next but most of the time uh, they save your time and they will not give you a hard task then comes circulation in circulation first step again looking at the monitor you are looking for blood pressure heart rate ecg three things here so if they are normal still you need to verbalize i can see my patient's blood pressure is this heart rate is this 
and ecg seems to be normal or ecg seems to be having afib so you need to visualize after that you will check for there these are different kinds of p's so keep remember keep like keep them in your mind like this so pulses check for peripheries check for uh, capillary refill check for paler so when you are looking at the pulses in in the can you please mute yourself doctor somebody is talking okay okay so in the previous scenario we uh, found that pulses were absent in the lower limb so basically we are seeing for the pulses of whole body but when we are dealing with uh, normally when we are checking at the this radial pulses and then peripheries then it is fine but when you are dealing uh, with that scenario like uh, acute limb ischemia so ideally we need to check all the pulses so in normal scenario you can say that ideally i would like to check all the pulses here so in acute limb ischemia you have checked radial it's fine you will check brachial it's fine then you will go to your lower limb you will check pulses and they, the pulses will be absent in that case okay next thing is auscultation so most of the time this auscultation will be normal but if afib station is there afib has a very clear cut hint on ecg if it is afib then heart rate will not be constant it will be changing sometimes it is 50 and when you will see again it will be say 120 so that is a hint about afib so in that case you can uh, appreciate a murmur uh, while auscultation um regarding this breathing sounds and murmur sounds i would uh, advise you to uh, google them and try to uh, like keep hearing these sounds and in the exam it will be uh, clear cut for you when you are listening in the exam because uh, simman is making sounds through a speaker and the the sounds ma made by simman will be exactly the same okay and uh, some people are concerned about simman voice so just keep it in mind that it is also a kind of recorded voice somebody is talking so keep it in mind that somebody is talking and you are uh, listening to that voice on a speaker so don't be afraid and in the management of c you will pass two large bore iv cannulas you will start iv fluid bolus 500 to 1000 ml in 5 to 10 minutes and then you will take blood for full blood count urea electrolyte rfts lfts and clotting you will do clotting profile or any other thing that is relevant to your case you will do investigations here at this step okay after that you will catheterize the patient if it is relevant like if you are dealing with a uh, hypotension scenario in all the uh, in, like in most of the simen catheterization is not needed but it, if it is relevant you are doing for all obviously you will you need to catheterize so you can verbalize here next is disability in disability you will look for temperature uh you can if it is on monitor you can see if it is not then when you when you were touching the peripheries at that time you are well aware of the temperature because you are comparing and if temperature is low you can appreciate that if temperature is high then you can appreciate that as well and in simmen most of the time we don't need to do gcs we just do avpu it is a protocol which is used in emergency scenario because gcs is time taking so we use this protocol a means alert if patient is talking to us it means his status is a is alert is not talking we will try to talk to him like we can tell him hello mr john can you please open your eyes for me and keep them open if he is responding then his status is v he is responding to verbal stimuli p is pain if there was no response on v and and let me tell you wherever you can see a response you will stop over there if if he is opening his eyes at v then you it means that his uh, status is v if he is not giving you any response then you will go to p and you will give him any painful stimuli most of the time we squeeze the trapezius and if he is responding at p then you will say that he is responding to painful stimuli 
when nothing is positive then patient is unresponsive so you don't need to talk about this in simmen because you know it's time taking except dnar uh, all the other in hypoglycemia as well i think all the other simmen they are not unconscious but if you face any unconscious simmen or you can use this when you are facing an unconscious patient as well so you will be using this one avp okay so you can uh, look for blood sugar level uh, here as well so if blood sugar is low you can do bsr if it is low you will start the hypoglycemia management here if temperature was low then you can cover the patient to avoid hypothermia if at any time patient is mentioning pain then you can verbalize i would like to give my patient uh, you can ask him are you comfortable to talk or you want me to give you painkiller if he saying give me painkiller then you can say i would like to give me my patient painkiller uh, after ruling out allergies and contraindications then comes e e is the exposure so you need to expose the patient you are doing head to toe examination and uh, we normally do uh, start this part with abdominal examination then pelvis then arms and then legs and this completes our a b a to e approach if you are finished with that approach then if examiner ask you what will you do now your answer should be i will reassess my patient and i will do a b c d e again okay and whenever you see that there are some changes in the monitor patient is deteriorating you will do a b c d e again and um, one more thing is before starting uh, like after you are done with the greeting introduction part after that like in the usual scenario in the history taking part we some some time not all the people they sign post before taking the history that i would like to ask you a few question some point i will do some examinations and then we will be making a management plan together so in this in this sim man you can also verbalize the same thing and you can tell that the patient that um, i would like to ask you a few question i will I, at some point i will be examining examining you for that reason i may need to expose you and for that purpose chaperon will be with me to ensure your privacy and then we will make a management plan together you can verbalize the same thing before starting your a to e approach uh, i think we have discussed all these things in detail in the previous uh, scenario as well so without wasting any further time we will move to the topic now uh, if you are having any question you can ask me Hello, I, I want to ask a question, please. Yeah, sure. Um, for each of these steps, like for instance, um, circulation, must we um, treat the the patient and um, wait until that uh, circulation is stable before we move to the next step? For instance, if the BP is low, I will try um, starting the patient on IV line. Mm -hmm. the the blood pressure is not improving are we supposed to um keep you know trying to resuscitate this patient until the bp is up or before going to disability no no uh, actually you will do one step at one time you will not repeat that step okay so basically okay. you are trying to give the approach you have done you have given him iv fluid after that you can add one line and after uh, five i will give the iv fluid in 5 to 10 minutes and then i will reassess my patient okay okay add okay. that line move to your next step get the blood do d do e because sometimes the reason behind this low bp is patient is in shock sometimes mm. there is some internal bleeding that's why bp is not improving so according to the relevant simmen scenario you will uh, move forward but don't need to verbalize the same step twice once you have told uh, like about this bp thing i will give him iv fluids move to the next part okay. don't stay stuck there all right thank mm -hmm. you you're welcome any other question dr kurat 
after uh, introducing to the patient, then when I look at the monitor, then uh, like uh, if I found that patient is in shock and oxygen is low, blood pressure is low, so should I put the uh, IV cannula there and then and there, and or I should go to the circulation and then I put the IV cannula? Uh, like if I found you are talking about like at the first instant okay. you have seen the monitor, but and BP was low. You are saying that? Yes. Yes. Okay, so then you are saying if we see the BP low, uh, BP is low, then we will start giving him fluids or not? No, yeah, no. Yeah. You have to follow the protocol. If BP is low, still you will uh, go system wise, A, B, then C. Okay, because if oh, BP oh, yeah. is low, it can be because patient is having anaphylactic reaction. So how would you how would you know that? It might be the possibility that he is having a rash on his chest and you have not done B, then how are you sure that he's, he's having hypertension or he's having anaphylaxis or what is the cause of that? So you need to okay. follow A to E. Always should, I, should, I, should I suppose to uh, put IV cannula there? No, that, no, uh, no. I'll put cannula there no. and then I the no, no. part in the No, 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 no. You will start okay. from A then do B, then C, and then uh, next uh, steps. Never start from C directly. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, please, please, I want to ask a question, please. Um, for the disability, you mentioned um, temperature is on that disability. I don't know, is it, is it not supposed to be like when you are exposing, then you check the temperature. Should it be on the, the D? Um, actually, the as soon as you are aware that he's having, when you when you can know about the temperature, when you are yeah. checking pulses and peripheries at that time, you can have an idea about the temperature, right? You are touching the patient. Yes. You are comparing. And if the temperature is low, you can appreciate that there. Okay. So should okay. I bring it under the disability when I'm doing... The yeah, it's up to you. If you think that patient maybe is, the temperature is low. Yeah, if you think that his temperature is okay, the temperature which is low in acute limb ischemia is because of different reason, because of low perfusion in his limb. That is a different case. But if the patient, uh, like patient is hypoglycemic, then obviously he can be having low temperature. You will cover the patient. If patient is in shock then obviously he can be having low temperature. So as soon as you get to know about his low temperature, you can give the uh, blanket to the patient. You can say that I would like to cover, uh, after you are done with the exposure, ideally you would say that at that time. But sometimes you don't have to go to the exposure. Uh, you have done your management before that. Your pa patient is stable before that. So whenever you are thinking that patient is having low temperature, so in order to avoid the hypothermia, you can cover the patient. If right. in exposure, you, so you got to know about the temperature, you will do the same in exposure. Same thing. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. So I think we need to start the new meeting now. And then uh, because it will be interruptive in between the meeting. And then we will be talking about another question yeah 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 doctor yeah uh, regarding